in this class we will discuss one of the principle of uh, green chemistry among the 12 principles that is the principle number 7 so principle number 7 says use of renewable feed stocks so what does it mean or what does it state uh, by this term renewable see that renewable means that unlimited source or you can say that a particular source or uh, the particular uh, materials that cannot be depleted fast or you can say that uh, can be have of endless supply okay so now uh, the seventh principle that is use of renewable feedstocks what did you understand by this particular principle so it states use raw materials which are renewable rather than depleting one whether technically and economically practicable now here are two terms we have mentioned right that is uh, technically and another one is economically so now i want to uh, elaborate what does it mean by technically uh, in that uh, for that reason actually i am taking uh, an example suppose if you are wearing a shoe of size 6 and it has been damaged or wo tumko change karna hai agar tum wo shoe ko change karoge then you should change it or you should replace that particular shoe with a new shoe of uh, the same size that is number 6 abhi 6 number shoe size se tum to 8 number ya 10 number shoe size uh, replace nahi karoge na kyunki tumhara purpose fulfill nahi hoga and uh, for that reason you are thinking to replace your old shoe with the new shoe because old shoe is damaged and if you are having uh, problems in walking or running so you want to replace that but you didn't do that so there is two things first thing is that the new shoe whichever you want to replace with your old one that should fulfill your purpose that is the size should be matched and you should replace that otherwise it won't mean anything similarly suppose if you are having uh, a raw material or if you are having a particular ingredient suppose uh, that is a and a to use karne ke baad environmental effect ho rai. for example it is having some adverse environmental effect and uh, you got some greener ingredient that is b you know that b is uh, actually fulfilling the purpose of a and it is comparatively greener in nature but if you are not replacing that or if you are not trying to replace that a in your test or in your project then actually it is technically not practicable if you replace that a with b uh, sorry if you are replacing uh, that a by b then only in that case it would be called as technically practicable lekin aapko replace karna hai अगर आप रिप्लेस नहीं कर रहे हो फॉर एग्जांपल आपको पता है कि बी बेटर है ए से सब कुछ पता होने के बाद भी अगर आप प्रैक्टिस नहीं कर रहे हो उसको चेंज करने के लिए देन इट इज नॉट टेक्निकली प्रैक्टिसेबल एंड व्हाट डज इट मीन बाय इकोनॉमिकली प्रैक्टिसेबल फॉर दैट रीजन और फॉर दैट थिंग आई एम टेकिंग द सेम एग्जांपल दैट यू नीड टू चेंज योर ओल्ड शू फॉर एग्जांपल दैट वुड द द कॉस्ट ऑफ दैट ओल्ड शू वाज अराउंड फॉर एग्जांपल 500 रुपीस now if you want to replace it with a new one you will think about the new shoe should be in the same price region otherwise it would not be economically fit right so that should be economically practicable if you want to change suppose this a ingredient with another ingredient that is b that should be economically matched otherwise you cannot practice that or you cannot replace that right so we have to use the raw materials which are renewable rather than depleting one whenever technically and economically practicable now we should think about what does it mean by raw materials or the feedstock see that these uh, raw materials or feedstock is actually the same thing like the ingredient uh, ye raw material jo hai, hum log jo raw material ke mein baat kar rahe, it is not like the final product. It's uh, like you can say that in the starting actually, it's uh, like a, a basic thing or a, a semi, uh, you can say that semi uh, uh, basic thing uh, which actually can be converted in a particular final product. So raw materials or feedstocks means that ye final product kuch nahi hai. 
it is like uh, same uh, as ingredient which can be converted into the final product somehow. Look, abhi, uh, you have got sweets, uh, so it is uh, looking good, right? But actually, uh, I have shown this uh, for a knowledge purpose. See that in both these sweets, like this, this laddu in the left hand side and in the right hand side, you are having several sweets. So, in all of these sweets, the raw material, the uh, common raw material which has been used is actually sugar. So, sugar is the raw material and final product is the laddu or you can say that a particular sweet. So, raw material can be converted into the uh, final product. So, here the raw material is sugar. Now, if you think about sugar is the raw material, then how uh, you, you should understand how sugar is prepared, then sugar is prepared by the sugar cane, right? By the uh, sugar cane plant uh, and the process is a photosynthesis and in these process uh, what is happening actually these uh, sugar cane absorbing co2 uh, from the atmosphere so it is using co2 as the feedstock so in the last example for uh, we are taking uh, sugar as the uh, raw material whenever you are thinking to uh, prepare some sweets or laddus right but if you are thinking that sugar is uh, uh, the uh, final product, then in that case, CO2 is the raw material or you can say that CO2 is that particular feedstock. Now, what do you mean or what do you understand by the term renewable feedstock? We have already come to know that what does it mean by raw material or feedstock. Now, you should know about what does it mean by renewable feedstock. So, renewable feedstock means uh, that the particular raw material uh, should have some endless supply, right? So, now uh, what do you mean by, or what do you think by the term that is renewable feedstock? Uh, so far actually we have already understood that what does feedstock or raw materials means, but what does it mean by renewable feedstock? See that uh, renewable feedstock means that it should be replaced with the span within the span of human life or you can say that it can be replenished um, on the uh, human uh, uh, lifetime right so uh, what does it mean by human life see that human life means a short period of time so whatever the feedstocks we will use or we are trying to use that should be replaced within a short period of time so to just to uh, address that particular short period of time uh, these uh, human life have been uh, has been mentioned in this particular statement because the span of human life is very short so that's why actually we are uh, terming uh, these like replaced with the span of human life now what is the prime source of energy now think about this take uh, uh, five seconds and then think about what is the prime source of energy whatever we are using in our daily life we are thinking about uh, this uh, daily life so what kind of energy is actually uh, we are using and what is the prime source of that what is the prime source of that that is fossil fuel fossil fuel means particular oil that is crude oil or it can be coal, it can be natural gas, it can be minerals. So, the fossil fuel that is extend, extensively used in many purposes in daily works, in uh, daily life, whatever you are uh, thinking of daily life now uh, that uh, for example, uh, you are traveling by bus, you are traveling by train, you are traveling by uh, plane, whatever it is, every each and every time there is huge consumption of fossil fuel. So now, are these kind of fossil fuel that is oil, coal or natural gas, whatever it is that is minerals or not, are these renewable? These are actually not renewable. Why they are not renewable? And if uh, these are not renewable, then what kind of thing we should use? Now, what about renewable feedstock? So renewable feedstock means instead of this fossil fuel we can use biomass feedstocks what are the biomass feedstocks that is industry waste or you can say that biofuel uh, crops under the biofuel crops you can uh, think about the uh, sugarcane plant or eucalyptus plant or you can say about this uh, mm, uh, corn uh, plant 
under these industry waste there can be paper and pulp industry under the agricultural waste there can be solid biomass there can be wet biomass and under the oil crops uh, there can be uh, corn there can be uh, sunflower soya uh, seeds there can be coconuts there can be palm or cotton okay from that actually we are getting vegetable oil which uh, further can be converted into the biodiesel and which will uh, these kind of things which will look into the uh, later in this chapter so now we have already come to know that instead of fossil fuel we can use the biomass feedstock why because the fossil fuel is actually not renewable right the source is actually not renewable but this biomass feedstock is actually renewable feedstock so why renewable feedstocks are very important so instead of fossil fuel why we are thinking uh, to use these uh, mass feedstocks uh, particular answer is the sustainable development sustainable development means that whatever you are uh, we are using that should not have an adverse impact on the environment that shouldn't uh, damage the environment so uh, sustainable development means the development should be there without depletion of the natural source uh, without uh, having some adverse impact on the environment so that is a sustainable development so why we should not use the fossil fuel see the fossil fuel is actually being generated over millions uh, over a period of millions years right so um, how it is actually generated several kind of sea plants or animals are actually uh, dying and then they are buried on the ocean floor over the time they are covered uh, by the layers of this sand and then seal and over million years these remains buried under deeper and deeper and under this enormous heat and pressure condition they are converted into oil and gas so it will take a huge time it will take a million years right so that's why actually it is not renewable but whenever you are thinking or when or whenever you are uh, we are talking about these uh, biomass products then in the, uh, that case uh, we should uh, mention that uh, these uh, biomass are actually uh, renewable uh, because they can be easily uh, regenerated and uh, uh, that can be uh, reproduced uh, or replaced in a shorter period of time So now, there can be some other reasons uh, why uh, we should uh, use these uh, renewable uh, feedstocks or why these renewable feedstocks are important. The reasons can be like economic, uh, for example, over a period of time, we have already seen that oil prices or diesel prices are rising up. It, uh, it uh, cannot be uh, a situation where uh, the petrol or diesel prices will come down year on year basis. So every time the crude oil price will be on the higher side. Why? Because it is uh, uh, for the reason like demand versus supply. Whenever you are using vigorously or extensively the fossil fuel, up, after a period of time, the uh, supply will be less and demand will be more. So uh, obvious, the oil prices will go, go up. And then uh, these uh, renewable sources uh, will be uh, uh, comparatively uh, cheaper in uh, case and there can be some kind of uh, scientific reasons also that is uh, breakthroughs in catalysis or you can say the constant improvement in quality of renewable feedstocks and the most important thing is the environmental reason right because whenever you are uh, using the uh, biomass feedstocks actually what you are using you are using only the wastage product you are only using the wastage so you are using the wastage to convert it into a particular feedstock which can be further utilized to generate energy so that is means that is actually uh, excellent work right and there is uh, also an uh, important uh, facility that is biological compatibility because it is environmental friendly whenever you are using the fossil fuel actually many kind of byproducts will be generated which can be toxic in nature which can be harmful to environment but whenever you are using the biomass whatever the byproducts will be generated that is very less actually and even if the small percentage of byproducts will be generated that is not toxic to environment so overall it is biologically uh, biological comp compatibility uh, is there or you can say that it is environment friendly now 
there should kind of there should be uh, some kind of this practical uh, presence of uh, this uh, principle right so now here we have uh, uh, shown a particular solvent that is tetrahydrofuran which is actually extensively or vigorously used in uh, organic synthesis but do you know how it is being derived it is being derived from the acetylene which is actually a petrochemical product so now if we are uh, using this acetylene so we are using the petrochemical product which is actually not a renewable source so as a green chemistry part or as per the seventh principle we should think to replace that one now we can replace this with this 2 methyl hydrofuran uh, as a solvent so replacing this uh, tetrahydrofuran by uh, 2 methyl hydrofuran which uh, what actually we are uh, getting that these 2 methyl hydrofuran uh, can be prepared with the help of the biomass which is actually a renewable source so in place of tetrahydrofuran if we are you if we can use the biomass derived 2 methyl tetrahydrofuran it can save that particular uh, petrochemical source or the fossil fuel because we are using the uh, biomass pro, uh, biomass that is the renewable source or you can say that the renewable feedstock so that is a, a practical uh, example of this seventh principle that is the use of renewable feedstock so you can use the renewable feedstock like the uh, biomass uh, to prepare 2 methyl hydrofuran which can be used as a solvent instead of using this tetrahydrofuran so what about the energy from renewable sources now think about this here i have shown you a particular uh, four uh, images that is a, a collab so now think about this what are these uh, energy sources so from left to right actually this is a uh, uh, wind energy then hydro energy solar energy and the last one what is this the energy derived from the biomass so whatever the energy is uh, we are getting from the biomass what is that called it is called the biofuel right because it is uh, because we are uh, generating that with the living uh, organism okay so what is the biofuel mainly what uh, what does uh, the term biofuel particularly mean biofuel is actually bioethanol nowadays actually ethanol is very much promising to use instead of this uh, fossil fuel because whenever you use we are using the fossil fuel we are actually using a non-renewable energy source but ethanol is a very good substitute of that particular fossil fuel and if you are using or if you are generating that particular ethanol from that biomass or from that renewable source then it is a very good idea and that's why it is named as bioethanol now whenever you are using the fossil fuel after burning the fossil fuel co2 is generated that is we are getting co2 for example a plane koi bhi motor vehicle ja rahe after the emission after the carbon emission what is uh, we are what we are getting that is carbon dioxide so for example hum log agar ethanol use karenge uska bhi combustion mein carbon dioxide to aayega carbon dioxide kya nahi aayega so what is the advantage of using that biofuel i think my uh, question is clear to all of you that agar hum log fossil fossil fuel ke badle mein instead of using that fossil fuel if you are using the ethanol does it mean that the generation of carbon dioxide will be less if it is not less then how it will uh, be treated as a, a green chemistry part so of ethanol consume carbon while growing and release that carbon when combusted making it a neutral carbon emitter and does not raise the atmospheric concentration of co2 matlab kya hai ke for example ek plant jab grow ho rahe hai for example what is actually it taking from the atmosphere that is carbon dioxide right well, he planned after uh, uh, being converted into biomass then biomass is being converted into ethanol right I mean, ethanol after combustion it is produ producing the carbon dioxide and again that carbon dioxide is being consumed by a particular plant so ye actually cycle which i am trying to show in this particular uh, model 
that here what we are trying to uh, show that whenever a particular plant like that uh, feedstock uh, uh, either it can be uh, sugarcane tree or it can be uh, corn so it uh, uh, will be converted into this biofuel after uh, harvesting the feedstock after harvesting that uh, uh, sorry from that uh, biomass after har harvesting the feedstock from the biomass you will get the biofuel biofuel means particularly the bio uh, ethanol now this biofuel will be first distributed and then it will be consumed by several cars instead of uh, fossil fuel now again it will emit co2 definitely it will emit co2 but that particular co2 CO will again be consumed by that uh, plants like the sugarcane or uh, the uh, corn plant uh, for that food production right so this is the particular cycle and for that reason actually there would be there would not be that much extra contribution of co2 to the atmosphere it will be very less but whenever you are using the fossil fuel after combustion of fossil fuel it will actually generate huge amount of co2 to the atmosphere which cannot be actually further consumed by the fossil right but whenever you are using the biomass, the biomass is being produced by a plant and after converting into uh, the biofuel, whenever the biofuel will generate that particular CO2, again that CO2 can be consumed by the plants. So it would be recycled and the extra contribution of CO2 to the atmosphere will be very less. And that's why actually these biomass produced biofuel is very, very, very much uh, greener in nature extra contribution of co2 to uh, atmosphere will be very very less whenever you are using this biomass derived biofuel or bioethanol now there will be two uh, term that is biofuel or we are using that term bioethanol that is actually the same that is uh, it can be generated from this sugar cane or you can say that uh, corn plant right and at the right side actually i am trying to show you another thing that is the biodiesel now what is the difference between this bio uh, ethanol and the biodiesel the difference into in the composition itself and uh, with respect to that uh, particular uh, feedstock also that bio uh, ethanol is actually being generated from these uh, corn plant or you can say that uh, sugar cane whereas this uh, biodiesel is actually we are uh, getting from vegetables from uh, fats like thing okay so actually the biodiesels or the main constituent of biodiesel is monoalkyl fatty acid esters of renewable plant oils or animal fats whereas bioethanol or biofuel is the simple constituent that is ethanol which is uh, being derived from the biomass of uh, corn plant or sugarcane so now we have already completed the seventh principle abhi pura cheez complete ho gaya to ek to homework hona hi chahiye so now think about this what is green co2 can co2 be greener in nature just think about it and uh, write the uh, answer in the comment section so thank you for watching this video